Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide. This is a video series that I'm putting together that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. You've downloaded the program, you've got it installed, it does work, but you're having uh, problems just getting around, you don't really know how to do anything fun with it. So if, if that's you, then you found the right series of videos. Now I am assuming that you're watching these videos in order. Uh, the concepts that we cover here at this chapter, uh, at this point, are things that have already been discussed in great detail in previous videos. So if you watch this video as your first video, you might be a little bit lost. So you're definitely, if you're just finding my channel for the first time, you definitely want to pause this video, go back to part one, and watch all the videos in order. Now having said that, let's go ahead and continue our mission to the moon. Now, in the first video uh, in this Earth to Moon explanation of the Absolute Beginner Guide, you know, we talked about getting to the moon and arriving so that the sun would be shining. And we can see that that's definitely going to be the case because we're now out here at the moon and Brighton Beach is here. And this whole section is lit up and all this dark area is well away from Brighton Beach. So we will definitely be landing when the sun is up. And we talked about how to take off from Cape Canaveral, fly through the atmosphere so that we could minimize our uh, plane uh, difference in relative inclination so that we could arrive in orbit with a minimal uh, difference of relative inclination. And then we set up transfer MFD to get our, get our plan set up for going out to the moon. We encountered a small problem with uh, one of the realism settings, covered that in the previous video. And then we did the ejection burn to get out to the moon. So here we are, we're now, uh, we've covered the vast distance between the Earth and the Moon, and we have everything set up to get ourselves uh, in orbit around the Moon. So let's go ahead, first of all, here, and let's look at the Moon. Let's, I always kind of like to be facing the target whenever possible. Rotation. So let's go to rotation, and press a little bit of yaw, so we can just kind of see how things look. And there's the Moon in all its glory. Let's get all the way over to prograde, well, close to prograde. So let's think about what we have to do here. We're, we are here in our orbit, and according to our orbit trajectory, we're going to go close into the moon. We're going to get to about 15 kilometers at this point, and then if we don't do anything, we're going to fling right past the moon and just keep going out somewhere into oblivious space and be stranded in some bizarre orbit, possibly around the Earth, but more likely just in, around the sun. So that means if we don't do something when we get to this point, we are in big trouble. How far away are we from this point? This is our periapsis. This is the lowest point that we will encounter around the moon. And this is no different than if we were just in a low Earth orbit or a low orbit around any body. We can tell how far away we are from this point by looking at the PET value. Time to the periapsis is 4,600 seconds. Um, I don't know how many hours that is off the top of my head, but it's not, it's, not a very, it's not very far away. But the next order of business is to warp time forward to get to that point, so that's what we'll do now. It hopefully goes without saying that we need to be very cautious with your time warp at this point. If you warp forward and just fling past that point, you're in a lot of trouble. So it's, you might even, at this point, when you've got everything very well set up, you might just want to control S to save, which I did at the end of the previous video, so that if you run into any problems at this point, uh, you can just come back to that save point so you don't uh, completely uh, waste your mission or have to use a bunch of fuel for correction. So let's go ahead and warp time forward and get, out, get down to the periapsis. Now, we're not going to get all the way to the periapsis to zero before we start thinking about things. Again, we always think about things in advance, start our planning in advance, but we will get pretty close. So I'm just warping time forward at 100 just to be cautious. And we got a nice view of the moon here as we close in on it. Very pretty view. And I'll hit the home key to recenter the uh, HUD. And we're getting close enough now that we want to start thinking about uh, coming back to real time. So we're 557 seconds from, you know, periapsis, so like nine minutes or something like that. So in order to circularize our orbit around the moon, we're going to have to be, we're going to have to do a, a retrograde burn. So let's get into that position now. Press the retrograde autopilot. We can look outside just to see the 
ship settling. It takes it a few seconds to turn around. And this is all real time, by the way. And you can see, you know, we're, we're moving pretty quickly with respect to the moon. You can actually see the, the visuals pass by without even using time acceleration. Okay, we're almost in the retrograde position. Now, we've got a little bit of time here until we need to do the burn, so I want to explain a few things. For the absolute beginner, you're going to wonder when to begin doing this burn. The best way to know when to do the burn is to use some, to use some calculations or to use another MFD that can do the calculations for you. But again, doing calculations with pen and paper I think is beyond the scope of, an, of, a, of a video series that's entitled The Absolute Beginner Guide. And in, for the most part, I don't like the idea of directing people toward downloads and things like that because I think that just adds a layer of complication and and even so you should know how to do things without using external tools or additional MFDs so the the best way for the absolute beginner to know when to begin to do this burn is kind of the same thing that we talked about with the ISS and that's just trial and error as we're closing in on the periapsis point we begin the burn if, if we were to, to be in the burn now for example when we're still 433 seconds out which is too far if I'm just going to press the plus uh, the control key and press plus one time you'll notice that the time to the periapsis is counting down and that's that's fine but if I were to add in very much uh, main engine and when I say very much I mean not much at all like here you can see that this number is actually stalled and it's actually even counting up ever so slightly. So basically what that means is that we're, we're not close enough to the periapsis yet. You get the most bang for your buck when you do your burn when, you're is, when, you're, when you are as close to the periapsis as possible. And you also get the most bang for your buck by using the full power of the main engines. But if we were to use the full power of the main engines while we were still way out here, we would have two problems. Number one, the periapsis time would count up. And number two, our PEA would, in, uh, would go down. You notice that the PEA went down from uh, like 15 kilometers to what it is right now, which is 12.4. So I'm actually going to make a small correction on that. Translation. Because I don't want my PEA to be quite that low. And right now I'm just doing a little bit of a lateral translation. I'm pressing the number one just to push that PEA out a little bit more. 14, 15, something like that is fine. And I'll probably have to do this a couple of times because I'm explaining things to the absolute beginner. Now we'll go back to the retrograde uh, autopilot. So we know that the 400 uh, was uh, clearly too soon. So let's go to 200 and see what happens. And again, this may not seem like a real elegant solution, and that's because it's not. The, the elegant way to handle this is to do calculations and to, to use MFDs that can handle the calculations. This sort of guesswork, trial and error type of thing isn't elegant, but it is something that the absolute beginner can do. So now we're at about 200 seconds. So let's press the control key. Let's tr press a plus, and let's observe. We can see our PEA counting down. That's not what we want. And we can also see that the the time to the periapsis is still is still kind of it's counts up as we add in just a little bit of main engine thrust. So we're still too far away from this point. So let's turn the retrograde off for a second. Let's fix the PEA with lateral translation. Get it out to again about 14 kilometers, 15, something like that. And please understand that I'm doing this just for the sake of the explanation normally when i'm flying i would not do it this way but I, i'm just i'm this is just for illustrative purposes so we know that 400 was too much we know that 200 was too much let's see what uh, 60 seconds does for us so pet getting close to that point let's go retrograde let's add in some main engine and we can see with uh can see with about half main engine 
the time that the periapsis is counting down. But when we get all the way to full power on the main engines, it's actually counting up. So we're still a little bit too far out. So let's go to let's go to 25 seconds and see what that does for us. And then again, I'm looking at the PET value. So when we get to 25 seconds, we're going to apply full power to the main engine and see what happens. Because again, the closer we are to the PET, the more efficient this burn is. And if we can use the full power of the main engines, it's more efficient. So 25 seconds, full power on the main, and the PET is counting down. So that means we're being quite efficient at the moment. We're probably still too far out. Yeah, we definitely are. Because that's gonna it's not counting down fast enough, and now it's counting up. So let's kill the main engines. Let's get in a little bit closer. Let's get all the way down to 10 seconds. Actually, let's go to 8 seconds. Full power on the main. You can see the PET is counting down. So we're getting closer and closer to the, to the lowest point. The engines are being very efficient. And now we want to watch the APA, because this is going to change so fast that we'll get in trouble if we're not careful. So let's back off the main engines, watching just the APA at this point, nothing else. 80, 60, 50, 40, 30, let's kill the main engines. And we've got a fairly circular orbit. Rotation. We can switch to translation, and we can just do a little bit of, uh, let's turn off retrograde at this point. We can just do a little bit of forward, backwards, and even lateral can help us, uh, which is sort of side to side, can help us get a better ECC. Now I'm doing a little bit of nine, and we've got a we've got a circular orbit. And again, it doesn't have to be perfectly 0, 0.000 like I've got here, but you know if you can get a good circular orbit like this, it's always it's always good. Our PEA is 13.7, our APA is 13.8, so it's uh, we're above the highest peak on the moon. I did miss the target of 15 by a little bit. That's a little bit sloppy on my part, but um, again, that's one of the consequences of trying to do this while explaining the various things. Okay, we've got a little bit of time left here, so let's go ahead and go to the prograde position. Let's face forward, and let's think about what we have to do in order to make sure that we're perfectly lined up with Brighton Beach by the time we get over to that base. Um, according to MapMFD, if we zoom in on this point, We can see that our orbital path toward Brighton Beach is coming in a bit south, so that means when I did the when I did the mid course correction and I tried to anticipate how far south of Brighton Beach I needed to be, I was a little bit off. I should have brought it farther to the north. We can actually do a little bit of correction here easily enough uh, with just translation by pressing. First of all, you want to make sure the vessel is. Uh, facing forward on the center line. You don't, you don't want to be in the prograde position. You want to be facing forward or facing on the center line in some direction or another, but you don't want the prograde autopilot to be on because the prograde autopilot will be fighting what you're trying to do. And what we can do here is by using just a little bit of translation, we can correct this uh, orbital path. In fact, what we can even do, since since we need to do a change that's a little bit more than than translation can handle, we can use the hover engines or we could face orbit plus. Uh, so, for example, if I put in a little bit of hover, I'm actually that's the wrong way. I'm sorry. So w by testing it in that direction, I could see that this green line was actually coming down a little bit. So I'm actually uh, facing the wrong way. So what I can do instead is go to orbit minus. There's actually a better MFD for this purpose uh, called base sync MFD and this is what I always use for when I'm doing this around the moon but again I don't want to get into add-on MFDs. So by just kind of guessing here a little bit I can see that the I need to be facing orbit minus in order to bring this plane up toward Brighton Beach. And now the autopilot's settled, so 
put in a little bit of main engine here just very carefully and you can see this green line is now moving closer to the center so we'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit more on Brighton Beach zoom in a little bit more add a little bit more main engine And this just, is, this just ensures that by the time we get over to Brighton Beach, our orbital path will, be, will have us passing over top of the base instead of passing quite a bit south of the base. Because if we pass way south of the base or way north of the base, then we'll have to hover a long time in order to get to the base, and we don't want that because hovering is very expensive. So now that we're well lined up with the base, go ahead and go back to the prograde position. Just, I, I tend to like to default to the prograde position. It's just something that I do. Now, how far away are we from Brighton Beach? We are, if I zoom out here a little bit, we're 4,600 and, uh, let's say 4,600 kilometers out. Now, the best time to do the deorbit burn is when you're actually halfway around from the base. So, really, what we want to do is we want to go around one more time because if we do the deorbit burn now, uh, which we could do quite safely, but it's not the most efficient time to do it. So we're going to go ahead and warp time forward until we're exactly halfway around from Brighton Beach. So, And I'll show you what that means here exactly. So now, getting close here. So right about now we're exactly over top of the base. You can see the distance is uh, 17 kilometers. We're almost exactly over top of the base. We might even be able to see it. In fact, there it is. So now we want to go around to the halfway point. We want to go halfway around the moon. And we know we're halfway around the moon when this number stops counting up and it will start counting down. So it's still counting up. 4,700, 4,800, 5,000 kilometers. 5,300 kilometers. Okay, now we're counting down. We actually overshot a little bit. That's okay. But we're halfway around, so we're going to go to the retrograde position. And hopefully you understand that the reason that we want to be halfway around is because anytime we want to lower our orbit, if we, go, if we go all the way back to the absolute beginner guide on raising and lowering the orbit, remember to when we apply, when we lower the orbit, it affects the opposite side of our orbit. So if we're halfway around from the base and we lower the orbit on the other side, that means the orbit over here will come down. And we need to do that as quickly as we get into position here because we did overshoot the halfway point just a little bit. So now I'm going to bring my PEA all the way down to just maybe like a kilometer. We need to bring it down pretty low. Now again, technically the highest peak on the moon is like 11 kilometers. So if we had some sort of uh, terrain on the moon and we had the right maps to know where that terrain was at, then we may actually have to have our PEA uh, higher so that, we would, so that we wouldn't crash into a potential mountain as we come around the moon. But again, since Orbiter doesn't model any of that, uh, doesn't model terrain, then we don't have to worry about that. So we've got our PEA all the way down to 1.5. That's good enough. We'll go with that. Now we can set up our transpond, uh, we can set up our uh, frequency information for Brighton Beach. So let's bring up ComNav and then press Control I and we'll bring up the spaceport and select Brighton Beach. First thing that we want to do is we want the long range uh, radio beacon. That's going to be frequency 116.30 and that has a range of 500 kilometers. The landing pads only have a range of about 25 kilometers. So we want this one uh, to be set up so that once, once we get within 500 kilometers of the base, we have uh, an MFD that we can use to help us uh, get on target with the base. So that's the first one we're going to set up. That's going to be 116.30. And we'll just put that on nav 1. And now we can use any of these landing pads because they're all free. Uh, there's nothing landed on any of the pads. So we'll just go with landing pad number 1. So SL plus to make this the active... Um, frequency for changing and it's going to be 132.20 so that's set right there 132.20 
go ahead and close that out. And we still got a little bit of time left before I want to wrap this up, so we'll go ahead and get closer to the uh, point of uh, doing the deceleration burn. So I brought up uh, the VOR, VTOL over here on this side, and we can go ahead and warp time forward until this MFD comes online. And by come online, I mean you'll see this, this black area will be populated with data. And we know roughly how long that's going to be because the periapsis is here and we the base, so that's basically where the base is at. So roughly when we're somewhere over toward this area over here, then this MFD will become active. Actually, let me go ahead and bring back up map MFD. Uh, while we're still 2,000 kilometers out, even though this video is a little bit shorter than I would like it to be, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. So it's Control S to save, Control P to pause the simulation. Because uh, I want to make sure that I can hopefully do the whole landing process in one video. I don't want to have to stop the landing halfway through and pick it back up. So I'll go ahead and end this part here. Uh, if you like this video, please hit like. It always, uh, it's always appreciate appreciated and subscribe to the channel. I also have a Facebook page where I post all my videos. I put up some pictures from time to time and post other space-related content, various vi videos and articles. So check that out as well. There's a link in the uh, description box down below. And I'll see you in the next part.